Hey guys, it's Jake here with the trailer Today we're going to be taking a look at and I'm going to show you how to install the Deutsche Hydro Pro brake actuator. The series that we're working with today is going to be the G1600 Alpha. If you need a higher flow rating or if you have a triple axle trailer, that's a good reason to need more flow. Uh, that is going to be the G1600X Alpha. The unit itself is going to have a very small construction comparative to a lot of the other accessories on an RV. Um, you can mount it up pretty well anywhere. You've got an open footprint of about 6 by 12 inches. Uh, we've got ours mounted up here on the floor next to our generator. This is an open space that the owner of this vehicle was not using anyway. Um, there's actually the, some leveling blocks that can sit up here, some other things that you can store here. So it's really nice that it is a small size actuator that puts out a lot of power. One of the biggest benefits of switching over to a more powerful brake actuator like this is going to be the reaction time. So from the brake pedal itself to the brakes actually being applied, it's going to put out a thousand PSI at three sixteenths of a second, which is extremely fast when comparing it to a lot of other brake actuators out there, and especially when comparing it to that of electric brakes. There's a couple other features about the HydroPro brake actuator that are going to stand out compared to other brake actuators out there. Uh, this particular one is going to be a 100% sealed unit. Uh, there's a lot of uh, its competitors out there that you have to put a vent on it in order for the system to work properly. Whereas this one, as soon as you get the fluid running through it properly, get the right amount of fluid in there, you put that cap on and it's sealed and there's no other maintenance that you have to do on it. The other thing that's really nice about this that a, a lot of other actuators don't work great with is going to be factory and aftermarket brake controllers. This one is going to be designed to work with all of them. Another few things I like about this actuator is that it's going to have an all aluminum construction. You're going to have this 90 degree fitting here that it can rotate 360 degrees. So however you decide to mount it, you can see here I have it mounted down so they go straight down through the floor. That's always worked really well for me. But if you decide to mount it somewhere else, you can always rotate it so that it works best for you. The other thing is on the inside, there's a very, very powerful and quiet pump so that you know the system is gonna work well and reduce the amount of vibration for the years to come. Before we jump into the installation, I wanted to point out one very important key factor for this. Uh, a lot of brake actuators will, will require DOT3 fluid. This one requires DOT4 fluid. So you want to be sure to pick up some of that fluid before you start your installation. But with that being said, let's go ahead and pull it in the shop and show you how we got it installed. Once you finish up your brakes, we can move on to mounting up our brake actuator and running our hard lines. Um, what you want to do is you want to find a good place to mount this up. Typically, uh, we're working on a toy hauler here. We have a lot of space up here on the front to the left of our generator. You kind of want to stay away from mounting it up on top of these boxes because there is some significant vibration that this will put out. So um, you don't want it to be attached to the sheet metal up here. So if you put it on the floor here, that's perfectly fine. I think that's where we're going to put ours so that there's easy access for maintenance later on. If you decide that you don't want to put it there because you have too much stuff up here already, you can always look for a um, a compartment on the side of your camper and put it there. Just keep in mind that our, our outlet is gonna come off the side of it, not off the end. There's a lot of actuators out there that will come off the end and go straight down into the floor, but this one you're gonna to have to have at least two inches off the side to have this hose stick out. So you can tuck it up tight against the wall, but just make sure you got enough room to run this hose down. When putting your fitting in, you'll just wanna take the 90 degree angle piece, thread it in, and then this is going to be a jam nut to hold it in place. Then we'll take our adapter here, thread that on, and then you just want to snug that up so we don't have any leaks. Uh, what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna lift it up in a place now, mark a hole, and then cut this hole out in our floor before putting our self-tappers in here. I'm gonna go ahead and get ours mounted up, and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like.
After you've finished all your work with your hydraulic lines, you've got them all connected up to your brake cylinders or to your brake drums, you want to come to the back of your hydraulic actuator and you're going to see these four wires. The black wire will be your power wire. The white wire is going to be your ground. The blue needs to go to a brake signal and the yellow wire needs to go to the cold side of your breakaway switch. We connected these to a couple of duplex wires. You can find this wire on our website. It's just a black and white wire and it's the same gauge as this wire. Um, what you can do is you just match them up. So one of them we have connected into our black to black and white to white. I taped that wire so that I know by the time I get to the other end of it that I'm dealing with the same wire because we have two whites and two blacks. And then I connected the blue wire to our black and our yellow wire to our white. So then we took our wire, ran it up, just followed our factory wire and you can see right here and then went up over top. And then what you can do to get that wire out to the kingpin of our trailer is you run it over top of the material that makes up the nose of your camper. You want to take out a few screws and that allows you to fish wire it. So you can see here I just removed a couple of screws. Essentially you just need to remove enough screws so that this belly drops a little bit and then you can take an electrician's fish wire. They really work best because they're rigid and you can shove it up in there. Um, I have had situations before while running this wire um, where there's a lot of screws under here. We don't have very many screws in this area, so this was able to drop it quite a bit. But just take, take however many screws out you need in order to give you enough space. A lot of times there's aluminum cross braces in here or wooden cross braces, and you can't quite get the wire through there. Um, so just keep dropping screws until you can get this panel to drop a little bit. I found that if you run the fish wire from the kingpin back, it's a little bit easier because you can pull down on this and it helps to form a little dip in, the, uh, in this liner and you can run that wire back. But you'll want to pull it out here. We've got our taped wire here you can see. So we connected that off to our, you just want to cut into your seven pole, just lightly score this, this rubber coating. Um, being sure to not damage any of the wires, cut it back a little bit, and then cut your white wire, your black wire, and your blue wire. You do want to test these to be sure that you are tying in the correct wires. I tested all of ours and they matched up perfectly. And then that last wire, the yellow wire, um, which is our other white wire here, we had to tie into the cold side. The way that you test this is over here on our breakaway switch, you'll see there's two wires. You just want to take a 12 volt probe, probe into the wire. One of them should be hot because it's tied to the breakaway battery on the RV or tied to the house batteries. The other one should be cold. You'll want to pull this plunger, then the other one will become hot. So you want to tie into the cold wire. What I recommend doing from here is you'll take this, put your black jacketing back on the best you can. Um, I like to leave these free so that you can still work on them later. Um, but what I will do is I'll take some electrical tape and tape um, a lot around this so that it's protected. And then we can tuck it back up in here and take our um, clamp and clamp it back up. And this will all be safe and out of the way. To run your line set, you're going to attach the longer length um, directly to the bottom of this fitting that we have sticking through our hole in our pan here. And then you want to run along. It's not a bad idea to use a tubing bender because you can kink this stuff. And once you kink it, you got to get a whole new line set. Um, if you're using your hands, make it very, very sure that you are making the curves gentle. And then we just followed along, used the included um, straps that come with our kit. We just took out the screws that they had in there, took it out, put our uh, loom clamp on and then ran it back up in there. And we just ran it all along the side, following those same steps. You wanna put any slight bends over it if you have to go over top of any lines, and then go back all the way to our first set of brakes, where we'll put a loop in it, and then attach it to our block that has four fitting inserts on it. From here, the long line set that's coming from the front is gonna go into one end, and you'll have another line set going out back to the rear axle on the passenger side. 
you'll have another one that goes across to the driver's side, and then you'll have your brake line that is a flexible brake line that you just put in a small loop down to the uh, brake caliper itself. Now, because we have the Roadmaster Comfort Ride system, we had a really nice way to run our, uh, our hose going from the block there back to our rear axle. We just ran it inside of this block. If you have the same situation or um, if you don't, it's, it's a good idea to throw some wire loom or some uh, heavy amount of tape on it wherever it could potentially rub. So we don't want it to rub on any of the hardware on the inside of this block, so that's why we put that on there. But the way that the rear brake calipers are gonna be connected is you run it back. I just put a small loop here, and then you're gonna use the union fittings to connect both of the male ends. And then your, your male end here will just come out through your flexible hose and into the brake caliper. When you run the hydraulic line over to the driver's side of the vehicle, you'll have to tap into the fitting that comes with your kit and it only has three because we don't have the main line coming back but you'll have the flexible line coming out the one side we draped it around this side of our comfort ride again if you don't have the comfort ride here you can do a straight shot down to your brake caliper and then we took our other line this one because it was at a, a different angle we did not go on the inside of this block we went on the outside but we still uh, wanted to keep it safe and out of the way Whenever you're tying this line up to the underside of the belly, just cut two slits in it and you can put a zip tie over and kind of stitch it to it. Um, and this stuff is very, very strong, so you can tie it off to it. And then the, for the rear one, we did the exact same thing. Just put a small loop in it, and then we have our fitting here, um, and then attached to a flexible line and to our brake caliper. In order to bleed your brake lines, you want to have a reservoir or something like this. We just use an old bottle with a hose and you want to put it on the end here. Otherwise, when you're bleeding these, you're going to have brake fluid going everywhere. Um, you want to put a wrench on the small portion on the top. This is a 5 16 wrench. And you want to have a team of people uh, up at the front of your vehicle applying the brakes on your, your truck that you're pulling your camper with and you can uh, bleed the brakes that way. So we'll go ahead and open this valve up and turn on our actuator. Once you see no air bubbles, you want to shut that valve off and turn the brake actuator off. Now, once you've checked all your brake calipers, one time I'd go around and check them all again just to be sure that any air bubbles didn't get to a different hose while you were trying to bleed one. Um, after you've done that, you go ahead and put your cap back on your brake actuator and you're all good to go. Once you've bled your brakes, you want to uh, put the correct amount of fluid in. Once you put your cap on, you can then pressurize the system so you have none of your brake valves open and you'll want to just turn your actuator on and let it run for a little bit and check all these fittings to make sure you don't have any brake fluid bleeding out of them. That's gonna do it for installation. Make sure that you get all your components back in place and then you're ready to hit the road.